Ukrainian forces are making further gains in the Donetsk region. Geolocated social media videos show troops raising the national flag in a small town near Lyman. Pro-Russian forces still control a small pocket of territory in that area, but the Ukrainians are closing in on them from three sides. CNN is the first TV crew with access to the area around Lyman, where fierce fighting has left little standing. Here's Nick Payton Walsh. Hidden, but unstoppable. Ukraine's not bragged much about its march south from Kharkiv towards the prize of Donetsk, but every rooftop or tree line suggests they've just been too busy advancing. Day by day, reducing how much of occupied Ukraine, Moscow is about to falsely declare Russian territory, with the ultimate goal encircling the vital railway town of Liman close, no quarter given all the way through the forests to the monastery town of Svetogorsk. The drive to this point, probably the most depressing two hours we spent on the road for the whole six months of this war, just laying bare the utter ferocity of the fighting and also to the speed of Ukraine's advance to this town, which itself is shocking. Eight years ago, at the start of the conflict, I lived on off here for six months and just learned to appreciate it's normality, it's peace amid all the pines here, and that's just gone. It is the most fragile who remained when Russia moved in. Anna is one of nine people left in her block. She almost didn't make it. The scariest was when the Russians one night were in a firefight in my courtyard. I was in the doorway and tried to hold a steel door shut, but a soldier pulled at the door, so I jumped down and fell in the basement. He tore open the door, shot his gun into the darkness, and missed me. Some seek survival in their god here, whose monastery looks down on the mess. Luba asks me if they'll come back, the Russians. They made such a mess of their new post office, she says. On her shirt, a lock of hair from her local beloved priest, killed by shelling in June. I attached it as a protective amulet, she says. Tell me. Can I leave here now? Even the carcass of here, still rocked by shelling. But the church bells finally rang again two days ago. They brought Ludmilla to tears. It rang and I heard it, she says, and I listened and it got louder. They are now out of the church basement where they hid from the bombs and still try to live. She's just saying it's cold down here and you can feel that seven months underground. Anxious to not show their faces, their plight down here is their private tragedy, one says. Ludmilla's disabled son was injured in shelling and taken to hospital, she tells me. She last saw him alive, but that is all she knows down here. There is little salvation here, only ruin turning to rust. There is no let-up in Ukraine's advances or of Moscow's imminent annexation. The absurd claim this land is now actually Russian territory. The land here, testimony to how the collision between this right and that wrong shred the very thing both covet. Nick Payton-Walsh, CNN, Sviatogorsk, Ukraine.